Hi guys. In this video, I'll be proving that the Riemann zeta function has no zeros with a real part of 1. Now, this is a really cool result, and it's also very important in the proof of the prime number theorem. The proof I'll be using today is from proofwiki.org. I really like this proof because it really has a simple idea, which is basically that if I have some sort of combination of the Riemann zeta function and I can derive some sort of special property of that, then you can in turn derive a special property of the Riemann zeta function itself. Also, before we start, I just want to say thank you so much for 400 subscribers. I really appreciate it. I never thought I would get anywhere close to that. It's very epic. And hopefully one day we can hit 500. That would be amazing. Uh, so let's get started. First, let's derive the Euler product formula for the Riemann zeta function. Consider the product over all primes p of 1 divided by 1 minus p to the negative s. Now, using the geometric series formula, we see that this is just equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of p to the negative s to the n. And we can switch the order of the powers if we want, like this. And so, therefore, our product is equal to this. Now, we could expand our product of sums like this. And we see that we can collect all the terms to get p1 to the n1, p2 to the n2, p3 to the n3, forever to the negative s. Now, by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, every single natural number has exactly one way of being represented as a product of some powers of primes. And so every natural number will appear exactly once in the sum. So therefore, what we're really doing is just summing from n equals 1 to infinity of n to the negative s. So this is just the zeta function. So therefore, we have shown that the zeta function is equal to the product over all primes p of 1 divided by 1 minus p to the negative s. And it's really important that we have the real part of s being greater than 1, so we have absolute convergence and everything works out. Now consider zeta prime of s divided by z of s. By the chain rule, we can see that this is equal to d over ds natural log of z of s. We can plug in the Euler product formula like this. Now we can move the natural log inside by turning this into a sum, and we can also move the d over ds inside. And we can again use the chain rule to see that this is equal to d over ds of 1 minus p to the negative s over 1 minus p to the negative s. And we can just explicitly calculate this to get that d over ds 1 minus p to the negative s is natural log p times p to the negative s. Now, we can expand 1 over 1 minus p to the negative s into this infinite sum using the geometric series. And we can move the natural log p, p to the negative s inside like this. And now we can do a change of variables in our sum, like this, where we are now summing from 1 to infinity. This is equivalent to summing over all prime powers p to the n with n at least 1 of natural log of p times p to the n to the s. If we define the Chebyshev function to be natural log of p if x is a power of a prime p and 0 otherwise, then this is just equivalent to negative the sum from m equals 1 to infinity of the Chebyshev function of m times m to the negative s. So therefore, zeta prime of s divided by z of s is equal to negative the sum that I was just saying. And we can also multiply both sides by negative 1 to get this. Now fix some real numbers sigma and t with sigma greater than 1 and consider s which we define to be sigma plus it. Now negative zeta prime of s over z of s we just showed was equal to this sum. And we can break it apart like this. And we can also change the base to being e for the second term like this. And now what we can do is we can use the formula e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta like this. And we see that the real part of this will be equal to the sum from m equals 1 to infinity of Chebyshev of m, m to the negative sigma cosine of negative natural log of m times t. Now, since cosine is symmetric, we can just ignore the negative sign like this. Now, we can consider, this seems pretty random, but it turns out to be very useful, negative the real part of 3 zeta prime sigma over zeta sigma plus 4 zeta prime sigma plus it over zeta sigma plus it plus zeta prime sigma plus 2 it over zeta of sigma plus 2 it. We can break this into three pieces like this. Now, repeatedly using the formula that we just found, we see that we can rewrite it like this. And we can combine our sums and factor out Chebyshev of m times m to the negative sigma. And let theta equal the natural log of m times t. 
and consider 3 plus 4 cosine theta plus cosine of 2 theta. Now, using the double angle formula, we can rewrite it as 3 plus 4 cosine theta plus 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And we can simplify it a little bit like this and factor it. And because this is a multiple of like a perfect square, we see that this can never be negative. So therefore, 3 plus 4 cosine theta plus cosine 2 theta is greater than or equal to 0. But this is equivalent to 3 plus 4 cosine natural log mt plus cosine 2 natural log mt. But since our sum is just this times a positive multiple, namely the Chebyshev m times m to the negative sigma, we are summing over a bunch of non-negative things. And so therefore, our sum itself must be non-negative. And so we have shown that negative the real part of 3 zeta prime sigma over zeta sigma plus 4 zeta prime sigma plus it over zeta sigma plus it plus zeta prime sigma plus 2 it over zeta sigma plus 2 it is greater than or equal to 0. Assume that we have some real number b such that zeta of 1 plus bi is equal to 0. Then consider the function eta of x equal to zeta of x cubed times zeta of x plus bi to the fourth times zeta of x plus 2 bi. Now, the logarithmic derivative of eta of x, we can split apart like this to get 3 times zeta prime x over zeta x plus 4 zeta prime x plus bi over x plus bi plus zeta prime x plus 2bi over zeta of x plus 2bi. And we just showed that negative real part of 3 zeta prime sigma over zeta sigma, etc. is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, we must have that the real part of eta prime of x over eta of x is less than 0. Now, consider the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, which means we're starting with an x slightly larger than 1 and slowly decreasing it to get to 1, of eta of x. Now, I won't go into the exact calculations, but we can basically approximate z of x as an integral to show that it is very close to being equal to 1 over x minus 1. So, it is going to have a pole of order 1. On the other hand, we know z of x plus bi goes to 0 as x approaches 1 by our assumption. So we know that it has a zero of order at least one, because zeros are always of integer order. And finally, we can either use from a previous video this equation right here, or we can use a weaker version of it that's a little easier to derive. But I won't go into the exact details since I already talked about that in another video. Uh, but basically, we can show that zeta of 1 plus 2bi is never going to be infinity. That's relatively easy to show. And so if we consider what happens as x approaches 1, we see that since eta of x is zeta x cubed times zeta x plus bi to the fourth times zeta of x plus 2 bi, well, the first term is going to infinity with sort of an order of 3 because we're cubing it. But the second term, it has at least a 0 of order 1. And since we're raising it to the fourth power, zeta of x plus bi to the fourth is going to 0 at a quote unquote speed of like x to the fourth. And then the third term, we know it's not going to infinity, so we can kind of ignore it. And we see that the zeta of x plus bi to the fourth term is going to zero faster than zeta of x to the three is going to infinity. So therefore, it'll quote unquote like overwhelm that term. And you can make this all rigorous, but basically, uh, because the second term is like overwhelming the first term, this thing is going to go to zero. But from a little bit of calculus and complex analysis, we know that a function approaching zero means that its logarithmic derivative approaches positive infinity as we approach from the right hand side. And so therefore eta prime of x over eta of x as we approach x equals 1 from above will tend towards infinity. But this contradicts that it is less than or equal to 0, which we showed earlier. So therefore we have a contradiction, so our original assumption that zeta of 1 plus bi was equal to 0 was wrong, and so therefore zeta has no zeros with real part equal to 1. Thanks for watching.